The Dallas Cowboys have had many great players at the tight end position over the years, but none have put together a resume like Jason Witten. The third round pick out of the University of Tennessee has played 15 seasons for the Dallas Cowboys. During that time, he caught 1,152 passes for 12,448 yards and 68 touchdowns. Witten currently ranks fourth on the NFL's all-time reception list and 21st on the all-time yardage list. His other NFL records include most single-season receptions and most catches in a game by a tight end. He also holds Cowboy team records for receiving yards, receptions in a single game, and consecutive games started with 229. Witten is tied with Dallas Cowboys great Bob Lilly for the franchise record with 11 Pro Bowl selections. The two-time All-Pro selection is one of the toughest players to ever wear the stars for the boys, missing only one game during his stellar career, which spans 239 games. Witten and his wife Michelle created and are heavily involved in the Jason Witten's Score Foundation, which seeks to prevent domestic violence. He was named the Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year in 2012. Tonight, yet another honor for Jason Witten, this time as a member of the Texas Sports Hall of Fame. Good evening. Thanks for not uh, getting those cars started up pretty quick there. I thought maybe being the last one when Brad informed me that some of your cars would be packed up, but appreciate you sticking around. Um, I would like to extend my sincere appreciation to Texas Sports Hall of Fame Board of Trustees, President Jones, all my fellow inductees, just as they shared. It's a huge honor. Uh, when you think about Texas sports, it's almost like you can combine the other 49 states and it doesn't compare to what's in Texas. And uh, But to the inductees, uh, it is a, an honor to go on into this class with you guys, each of you. Um, I've been a fan of Nancy for a long time. Got to play against Andre. I was sharing at the press conference. Andre and I took a, took a trip together before you were drafted in 2003. And uh, we were going to Houston. And it was my first trip uh, before the draft. And it was, in, you know, they were in their second year. They had the third pick overall. And I knew I was going to get picked with the third pick pick, but I thought, okay, Andre's here. He's definitely a top five pick. You know, that third pick carries over to the second round. And, uh, you know, after he got drafted a lot higher than I did, I thought, um, you know, what did I mess up in the, in the meeting when I went down there? They had us do a lot of different stuff. Uh, but then I saw the tape. He was 6'4 and 230 and could run and catch. And he did it all better than I did. But, um, you know, when I, when I think about what makes these athletes so special. Uh, certainly each of them have special talents that help them be successful in their careers. But when I really kind of step back, I think the thing I appreciate about them more than anything else is the adversity and how they overcame it. I think none of them would be standing on this stage or sitting here if they wouldn't have had that mindset to overcome it. And uh, that's what's so it's so near and dear to my heart to be able to kind of join them with this. Um, you know, I, I did check, Brad mentioned it, that current players, I wasn't real sure. You know, I got the call back in November uh, about being inducted. And, um, you know, I, I was wondering if that call was going to come and something was going to say from the President Jones here, you know what, we're going to have to postpone you for a couple years. So I appreciate you guys taking me even, even while I came back to play. And to my good friend Brad here, uh, he is the best voice in all of pro football, without a question. One of the greatest voices out there in the world, yeah. I, I saw that firsthand. Uh, I called Brad, and he was generous enough to call a practice game with me before I went into the booth. And uh, I was thinking to myself, like, if I could just take him with me and call the game. No offense to Joe Tessitore, he's, a, he's got a great voice, but... He could help me out so much because Brad could do the play-by-play -play and the analyst's job if he wanted to. So, uh, but um, fairly early in my career, I think it was my rookie year, uh, Brad and I 
got to know each other. He'd come in the locker room, and I was green as I could be as a 20-year-old kid, just getting drafted to the Dallas Cowboys. And uh, shortly after we formed this relationship, we were on a road trip, and we are on the, on, the, on the plane, and I'm in the back of the plane, and uh, I see Brad walking down the aisle, and nobody was supposed to be walking down the aisle. And so as he got past me, I kind of nudged him and said, hey, Sham, uh, you know, didn't you hear what they just said? The stewardess said, go sit down, you know, that nobody should be walking through the aisles. Where do you think you are? Who do you think you are? You can walk around anywhere. And he leaned into me and he grabbed me. And I'll never forget it. Brad said, son, you listen to me. I was here long before you, and I'll be here long after you're gone. I'll walk wherever I want to walk on this airplane. And he's right. He is exactly right. But I look forward to getting back on that plane with you, Brad. Um, when I made that decision to come back, I, I think more than anything else, and people ask me all the time, like, what happened in, in the last month that make you to make that decision? And I think more than anything else, I would just say that fire was just too strong inside me. Uh, we all have it. Um, we all hear noise. We all feel like, you know, when it's time, it's time. And for me, I felt like that fire was too strong. I'm excited to be back. I'm excited to have this opportunity. But when I think back on my career, you know, I, early on, I, I wasn't dealt the best of hands. Uh, I had adversity early on in my life. Fortunately for my mom, she was able to get us out of a challenging situation. And we moved to a little small town in East Tennessee uh, where my grandmother and grandfather lived. Grandfather happened to be my high school football coach and um, really changed my life. And at that point, as, as a young kid, I became like the equipment manager for, for the high school football team. And he had me do a lot of different tasks. He didn't give the guys water, but he gave them ice. And um, I used to have to carry the ice buckets down for, for practice and go run on the field and get the kickoff tee and all that stuff. But in the midst of all of that, I fell in love with the game of football. And through a lot of hard work, uh, through grit, he taught me to respect the game of football and how I was going to be able to chase my dreams. And adversity didn't stop there. I was fortunate enough to get an opportunity to go play at Tennessee after a decent high school career. And when I got to Tennessee, I, I realized uh, really quickly that I wasn't that good. I thought I was going to be a defensive end. Very early in my freshman year, the coach came up to me and said, hey, we're going to go move you to tight end, which for any defensive player you know, like that's just basically telling you you're not a very good athlete when they move you to tight end. And uh, I remember calling my grandfather shortly after Coach Fulmer had told me that, and uh, I didn't, he didn't allow me to have much time to sulk and think about it, and I was complaining, and you know, just like any young athlete, maybe I should leave, maybe I should go somewhere else, and he said, son, listen to me. He says, you need to stop that. You need to go listen to those coaches. You need to put your head down, and then you go work, and you go play tight end, because that's what they asked you to do, and that's what I did, and Two years later, I had an opportunity to declare for the NFL draft after my junior season. Like most underclassmen, when you declare, we all don't get to go third pick overall like Andre. But we, we do uh, have this dream. And so, yeah, it wasn't the first round. It wasn't the second round. Uh, but I did get a phone call. And the guy on the other end had that nice Texas, Arkansas, Missouri accent. And uh, he says, Jason, you want to put that star on your helmet, boy? And uh, I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And for 15 years, I tried to approach my career like I was an undrafted rookie. Because the thing about the NFL is that every day you wake up, somebody's coming to take your job. Every day they're coming to take your job. So when I woke up early in the morning, I would drive in, and I would think that I was an undrafted rookie. And I would approach it that I have to earn it today. And all the catches, all the awards, that was great. But really, what I looked at it as is an opportunity to go chase greatness. And I didn't think about Muhammad Ali. That was a great story that Nancy told. But I was fortunate enough that in the Dallas Cowboys organization, I got to see the greats. And first person I spotted when I was sitting up here, I said, that's Bob Lilly. And I agree, Lloyd. He looks pretty good, man. He looks like he can still play. 
He is Mr. Cowboy. He always will be. Uh, and I think at every different generation in the Cowboys organization, there's those names. Not just some of the best Cowboys to ever play, but some of the greatest football players to ever walk on earth. Mr. Lilly, Mr. Cowboy, hope to make you proud this year, my man. And uh, But adversity continued to happen at different steps. You know, last year when I decided to retire, I said in my retirement speech that, you know, no man really knows when it's time. Certainly in football, certainly I, I was unsure of that. And I had a great experience in the booth, great experience calling games, but I just felt something tugging on me. And when Mr. Jones gave me that opportunity a little over a month ago, I thought, as I jump back into this, I know what it takes. And Nancy, I appreciate your words because there's going to be people that are going to be people that doubt that or question that. But more than anything else, it's just a desire inside of me. So I'm anxious to be back. And if I could just send any me one message to the young kids that are out there, when you feel that fire, don't be afraid to go after it. Don't be afraid to chase it. Don't listen to the naysayers, as Nancy said. Put your head down, work hard, make the right decisions, both on and off the field or on and off the court. And you'll be proud of it. Regardless if you get a championship or not, you'll be proud of that work ethic. Um, tonight, as I join this class, to say that I'm honored and humbled would be an understatement. But I certainly didn't get here alone. There was people along the way that, that paved the way for me, that gave me an opportunity. I'd just like to take a couple minutes and recognize them. First, I'd like to thank God for the ability that he's given me, the platform here in Dallas the last 15 years. Uh, secondly, I'd like to thank my wife, Michelle. Uh, I admire you every day. The way you live your life, how you go about it, thank you for all your love. And uh, third, I'd just like to say my four kiddos. I think you guys have seen my little girls running around up here. C.J. Cooper, Landry, and Hadley. You guys motivate me, and uh, I would like to share with you guys, they're pretty pumped up that dad's back playing football. <laughs> and lastly, to my granddad. He had his 81st birthday last yesterday, and uh, he couldn't be with, here, be with us here tonight, but uh, Pat, this award's for you, my man. So appreciate all the sacrifice he had that he made to me. And he didn't just pushed me to dream, he truly lived out that dream with me every day. When the games would end, you probably heard most pro football players will say there's about a two-hour window that I feel like you get to enjoy the win or the loss, and it's usually on a home game, you kind of get to let your hair down if you have it, and, uh, <laughs> and you get to enjoy it with your teammates your family, your loved ones, the people that you had to sacrifice. If it's a road game, you get to do it with the road family, guys like Brad and so many of the support staff. And I would get on the bus, and it took a little while after I, you know, talked to the media and showered up, and every single game I would have a voicemail. And it's funny because early on when he'd leave this voicemail, it was almost as if we were talking, like he thought he was talking to me on the phone. And it was like he was replaying the game to me. Whether it was a good game or bad game, uh, he would talk it through. He was very honest with me, too. I think that's why he felt like it was a conversation on a voicemail. But at the end of it all, he would always tell me, Jason, keep pressing on. Because this man had an unbelievable love for the game of football. And as I make this comeback, I don't know what it holds. Gosh, I don't know what it holds. But I do know that I'm going to commit myself to playing at the highest level I can play at. I know that I can hold the teammates who I think are pretty talented, actually really damn talented. And uh, I do know that when it's over, through all the adversity, that it keeps coming, that I'll be proud of the decisions that you make. So for those young kids out there, keep dreaming. To the Texas Hall of Fame, some of the greatest athletes ever, I'm humbled and honored to be a part of it. Thanks for tonight. That was, uh, that was good practice for Canton.
That was very good practice.